Hi, welcome to Exploring with Scientists. My name is Alice and I'm a graduate student at Michigan State University. I study moths and butterflies. Today, in this video of Exploring with Scientists, we're going to talk about the life of a lepidopterist. Before we talk about lepidopterists, there are many types of scientists. How many can you name? Say it out loud. So maybe you thought of someone who studies plants, they're called botanists. Or maybe you thought of someone who studies space, they're called astronomers. Or maybe you thought of someone who studies numbers, they're called mathematicians. At this point, you might be wondering, what is a lepidopterist? Well, a lepidopterist is also a type of scientist. Specifically, it's a scientist who studies moths and butterflies. And there are many different types of lepidopterists. There are lepidopterists who study taxonomy, which means that they study all the different types of moths and butterflies, and they give names to moths and butterflies, like new species. There are lepidopterists who study behavior, which means that they study what moths and butterflies do with their time, where they go, which flowers they like, how they interact with other moths and butterflies. And then there are lepidopterists who study distribution, which means that they do research on where different types of moths and butterflies are located in the world. There are some lepidopterists who study only caterpillars or only moths or only butterflies, but then there are some lepidopterists like myself who study all these different stages. So at this point, you might be wondering, how did I become a lepidopterist? Well, I got a job studying a rare butterfly in college. The butterfly that I was studying is called the regal fritillary. And these are pictures of regal fritillaries. They're large butterflies. They're about the size of a monarch. And they're orange and brown and black and white. I think they're really beautiful. Regal fritillaries, they, they live in prairies and they used to be found um, in the Midwest in the upper eastern part of the United States. And in the Midwest, they're still in these states that are colored yellow and orange and green. Um, and they're very rare in the states that are colored red. But on the eastern half of the United States, They've disappeared from all of these states that are colored blue or purple. And in the Eastern United States, they're only found in very few spots left, including there's in Pennsylvania. But in Pennsylvania, the regal fritillaries are only found in one spot, so they're extremely rare. And we were worried that the regal fritillary would disappear even from this one spot in Pennsylvania. So in order to save the Rio Fritillary, we had to ask some questions. We asked questions like, how many butterflies are still living in Pennsylvania? We wanted to know, where do they like to live? And we also wanted to know, what are their favorite kinds of food? In order to answer our questions, we had to collect data and do field work. One type of field work we did is called butterfly mark recapture. And this is when scientists go out and they capture butterflies with nets and they gently write a unique identifying code on the butterfly's wing. Then we release the butterfly and go back another day and try to catch the butterfly again. And this is just one way that scientists can count the number of butterflies living in an area. Another type of field work we did is we counted the butterfly's food plants. And this helped us know, is there enough food for the butterflies where they're living? And do we need to provide more food? Now that I'm in graduate school, I don't do any work on the regal fritillary anymore. Now I mostly study moths. And because I study moths, that means I need to do field work at night. One type of field work I do is I set up um, I tie sheets between two trees, like in this picture on the left, 
and I hang a light from that sheet. And the reason I do that is because as you may know, moths are attracted to light. So when I hang up the sheet and the light, moths will come and land on the sheet and I can look at how many types of moths there are and how many there are. Uh, in this picture on the middle, one of my favorite types of moths, an I.O. moth, landed on my sweatshirt and I was really excited to say hi to it. Another type of field work I do is I set up traps like on this picture on the right. And this allows me to um, go to sleep. So I don't have to stay up all night with the moths. I can put a trap out and leave it and come back in the morning. So how these traps work is that I have a bucket with a light on top and moths come to the light because they are attracted to the light and they fall into the bucket. And then when I come back in the morning, I can count how many types of moths there are in an area and what different types of moths there are. So one of my favorite things about being a lepidopterist is being able to interact with moths and butterflies. In this video, I'm holding and interacting with a tiger moth. And tiger moths are one of my favorite. I think they're so beautiful. They're so colorful. So let's watch. I'm very gently pushing its wings open so I can see its bottom wings, which are really colorful. And then it flies away. So thank you for exploring with me. Now you know what it's like to be a lepidopterist. But what else do you want to know about moths and butterflies? Say it out loud. In another video, we'll learn more about them. See you later.